Our message to you this morning is entitled, If the Foundations Be Destroyed. I am reading to you from Psalm number 11 and verse 3. And it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Psalm number 11, verse 3, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? As you and I both know, foundations are the most important part of any building. And the value of a building depends upon its foundation. That if you're going to build a skyscraper, you better put a different foundation under it than you would if you were building a barn or it won't stay there. And so if you're going to build a, a, a beautiful bridge across the river, you must realize that the foundation has to do with that bridge standing the stress, the strain, the wind, the waves. It, it's, got, it's got to depend upon its foundations. We're living in the most dramatic moment of history. We're living in the most amazing moment of the story of mankind. If there was ever a time when we are seeing the total of a 6,000 year history of man challenged, it's right now. Our total civilization is being challenged. The history of mankind is being challenged. And we're believing that our foundations are in jeopardy. The very foundation of human society is in jeopardy. And that's what we wish to talk about. As I began to think about if the foundations be destroyed, I looked into the Word of God and I found that the Bible has a lot to say about foundations. In Zechariah 12 and 1 it says, The Lord stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth. We would not know that the earth even had foundations if we had not found it in the Word of God. But God has made the earth like it is. And the Lord has formed it as it is. He's laid the security of it. He's, made it. he's laid its foundations. And the Word of God tells us so. We read in Isaiah 28 and verse 16 that Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. Where it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a cornerstone, a stone tried, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. The Lord Jesus Christ is that stone that has been placed there as a stone of security that the church shall rest our total hope of the future upon him and upon him only. Jesus Christ is our foundation. He is our chief cornerstone. He is the true foundation stone. We study in the Word of God that there's a right and a wrong kind of foundation. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 47, 48, and 49, the Lord Jesus told us about two kinds of people. He said, there are those who build a house, and they build it upon a stone foundation. The winds come, the waves come, but said, that house stands. The Lord says there are other kind of people that build a house, and they build it upon the shifting sands of the beach. The winds come and the waves come and the house falls because it was painted wrong. No, the paint job was all right. Because the roof wasn't right. No, the roof was all right. It was the foundation that was wrong. Brother and sister, there's some things that can be taken out of American life and America could sustain that. But I'm here to tell you this morning, if we remove the foundation stones of American society, we cannot exist as a nation and as a country. What are the foundations upon which rests this democracy? When we find that and when we know that, then we'll know what makes a country to abide. Never in the history of the world have there been a time when the foundations of society have become shaken like they are at this very moment. When we look through the past, we saw empire shaken. There was Babylon shaken. And when you look back upon it, the only thing the Bible tells us about was the king and all of his mighty men were feasting. They had their mind on something else rather than security. They had their minds upon something else. And they were feasting and eating. And in that same night, their nation was destroyed. I believe that comes as a warning to us. That a feasting nation has already permitted its foundations to rot. And there's nothing to sustain it and to hold it up. And so Babylon is a specter in the night. It's sand dunes in the Orient 
where the winds blow and the jackals howl and civilization is gone, they feasted one time too many. America's having a big party. America today is on its way with a big world. America is doing its thing as a nation. And I believe that we're just about come to the last big party for America. I believe that. When we look at the empires of the past, we see those like Rome. The last thing we find about Rome was that they were meeting in the great arena. And they were feeding Christians to lions. They didn't want to believe in Christ. They didn't love Christians because they were good people. And they were having the, the men to fight against animals. And there the emperor on the throne and all the noblemen around him were sports conscious. All of the television of that time and all the radio of that time and all the newspapers of that time gave most of its big spread to sports. And in the hour of sport, a nation died. I think if you would read your newspapers, you might find that America is almost to the point of no return. It is a sports-crazed world. A good football player can make more money in this country than if you were the president of the United States. That means we're in a state of insanity. When some big brute can push a piece of pigskin around a muddy field and make more than the man makes that guides a nation, we're a bunch of nuts. And if we don't find it out soon enough, there won't be left anything but a bunch of crackpots. If you know it, say something. Amen. Are the foundations of our land being challenged? What are the foundations? What was our country founded upon? Let me say first it was founded upon a Christian home. The men who went to South America from Spain did not take their wives with them. They picked up any kind of harlot along the road and had kids by them. And you have Latin America that way. They were looking for gold. Gold and more gold. The men that came to this land brought their wives and their children with them. They came to this land not for gold. They came to this land to establish a home. America was settled for a home. If there's any place on the face of this earth that should love the home, it should be this land. The foundation of this nation is the home. That's the reason the devil wants to destroy the home. Every divorce in this land is destroying the foundations of this democracy. Our country was founded not upon banks. You'd think some people thought so, wouldn't you? And these loan sharks downtown didn't found this country either. This country was founded in a humble home. And a home that put the little wash pan up on a little box and washed their hands. That was a lot cleaner than being four or five thousand dollars in debt. Well, go ahead and say something. Amen. What is the strength of our land today? It's the strength of our home. If your home is shaking, you're shaking this country. If you're breaking your home to pieces, you are destroying a nation. Just as sure as Nero sitting in his, in his uh, emperor's box watching men die as they fought lions. And that was the death penalty of an empire. So you and I today, in the destruction of our homes, are destroying what our forefathers bought for us in this land, a happy home. A Christian home. You say, Brother Sumrall, we don't get along together. I'll tell you why. You haven't had six hours in prayer together lately. How many are still here? I know what you hadn't had six minutes. But I tell you, prayer can change things, including your bad disposition. Would you ladies say amen for the men? It's Father's Day, you know. There was a time when our home was our castle. We had a fence around it. We loved it. Our children loved it. Home was the finest place they knew. When home becomes a place with a can opener and an unmade bed, you're in bad shape. 
when, when home becomes a place where the husband runs out the front door and meets his wife coming back with some bag of dirty pants on from the shop and they kiss each other or, or swat each other one and run back and forth, that don't happen to be a home. And that will not build a nation. And may I tell you, there'll be no history books to tell about this one. We've got history books on the others, but we won't have a history book. We're coming to the end of things. And our nation will be the terminal point. Civilization moved west. Beginning in Babylon, it never moved east. How many historians will say amen to that? It never moved east. It began in the east. It moved west. Every empire was one step toward the setting sun. There are no more setting suns. We are to the end of the way. This is the end of Western civilization. We've come to the shores of the Pacific. And when we fall, and when we fall, the foundations are being destroyed. The home. The home was once a place where a man was the head of the house. I know what some of you think. Oh, yes, he bossed his wife. That's a million miles from being the head of anything. The head of the house is one with spiritual discernment, with great love and great compassion and great cheer and a lot of fine ideas that was able for the whole house to enjoy things and to know things and to be inspired. He was something. He was something. The head of the house. When that head begins to totter and the wife does not respect him and the children do not respect him, you don't have a home anymore. You just have a shopping place or a shocking place. The authority of the home. Wives should respect their husbands and help to hold that authority where it ought to be. Children should always respect their parents and hold that authority because they can help sustain our nation even when they're young by making the home the strongest thing that we have. We'll make one step further. The strength of a nation, its foundations, is in its schools. When those pilgrims came to this country, they built a little place that they called a church. And all during the week in that place, they had school and they taught. And the kids that were reared in this country became the most literate on the face of the earth and the most democratic. Whether their dad had a big farm or a little farm, they all studied the same little red reader. And they grew up, not in the selected and secluded schools that Europe has, but they grew up together. When I was a boy in school in the South, there were millionaires' children in my class. And we never had any distinction. I only thought the girls were pretty, but it didn't do any good. They were millionaires' girls. When, when we went home, I walked home, and they went home in a limousine. But on the inside of the school, it was the same textbook, the same teacher, the same privileges. The school is a foundation of a society. The devil has attacked the schools of our land. That in attacking the schools of our land, he will destroy our nation. The hooliganism in the schools of America today is diabolical. You could give those young roughnecks and young ruffians the whole nation and they wouldn't know what to do with it. It isn't that something is wrong. It isn't that they want to do anything right. They want to burn down this nation. Our foundations are being destroyed. And the school is one of the strong foundations of our land. We're only, we're only as great as we are intelligent. And our schools are the basis of, of knowing and learning. And our schools are under the direct assault of communism and atheism and demon forces and anarchy. And you and I must realize that if our schools fall, our whole nation crumbles. Believe me. There are many Americans living in a fool's paradise. You're saying, you know, I don't live in a colored area. You may tomorrow night. You say, well, Brother Sumrall, we never had any trouble around here. Where did you get home today? I want you to know things can change in 40 seconds in this country. 
And people who felt themselves secure will find that you have been living in a fool's paradise. Brother, if they're having trouble in New York, it's my trouble. It's your trouble. If they're having trouble in Los Angeles and San Francisco, it's our trouble right here. And if you hide from it, you're a coward. And you're not an American. When the foundations of our democracy are destroyed, the whole thing falls together. It's gone. Our schools are undergoing the greatest revolutionary movement in the history of the world. Our school leaders are trembling, many of them not knowing what to do. They don't have God in their hearts, most of them, so they don't know how to turn to God for reserves of strength and courage to know what to do in situations. We need to pray for our school systems. Can you say amen? Further. When the Pilgrim Fathers came and founded this nation and put down the footings that this nation is built upon, they built a lot of little churches and they all went to church. If there's any foundation in a society to hold it up, it's its religion that holds it up. There has never been a time when religion was so shaken as it is in this country right now. In the Roman Catholic faith, they have hundreds and hundreds of their priests and nuns that are deserting and leaving. They have never known a time, maybe since the Reformation, when there was so much undercurrent that none of their leaders know what to do. But it isn't only in that church, it's only more visible there. For 50 years, the foundations of the church have been undermined and attacked. First it was the Bible, saying the Bible wasn't true, and the miracles are not true. And very slowly the attacks began. And these attacks have become stronger. Some of them are from the pulpit. Some of them are from the outside. But there are strong attacks against the church. You should not accept this as personal. If you were a devil, the world would love you. And if they dislike you, it's because Jesus is in the image of your expression. And so if they dislike you, you should thank them for it, saying, I'm so glad I look like Jesus. If I was full of the devil, I'd be your friend. Madeline Murray would like to, to be our very best friend if we were as full of the devil as she is. But because we love God and serve God and we want holiness and we want the Bible, she hates every one of us. You can rest assured. I don't mind people disliking me. For some people to dislike me, I'm downright proud of it. It makes me know I'm not on their side. But I want you to realize that this thing cannot be personal. It's not you or me or any one of us. And I'd go a step further and say it's not denominational. It's not someone being against Bethel Temple. This thing is toward the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the center of everything. He is the head of the church. And this onslaught is against our master and against our savior. And whatever they do, they do to destroy him. Jesus said to Saul on the Damascus road, I am Jesus whom you persecute. He says, I don't know you. What do you mean? Every saint of God that he had touched was the pupil of the eye of the Lord Jesus Christ. This attack against religion is against the Lord Jesus. And we're seeing the foundation shaken. The foundations of religion are being shaken. This very morning in our church, in our country, I can assure you that over 90% of the total nation are not in a house of worship. In our own community, there are just thousands of people that are in no house of worship at all. They have no respect for God. They have no respect for God's day. There are people listening to me on this radio right now, and I want them just to keep on listening. They're at home or in their automobiles, and they ought to be in church. And they're traitors to the cause of Jesus Christ, and I told them so right then. You're destroying the foundation. 
It's only when we are faithful that we're building. When we're unfaithful, we are destroying. I want the people of our congregation to be faithful tonight and every night this week. I want you to lay aside your business and the things you think you ought to do and let us go out and bring a soul here and win them to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would do that, next Sunday morning you'd be a taller man than you are this morning. And you'd be a happier woman than you are this morning. If you would take a personal interest, like our Sunday school lesson said, and go out and win someone for the Lord Jesus Christ this week, I believe God wants us to. What do you say? I believe that God wants us to. Are the foundations being destroyed? I have one other thought that I'd like to present on that, and that is personal. I believe that the devil wants to destroy every human being. I believe the devil wants to destroy the footings and the foundations of our own lives. You say, what is the foundation of our lives, Brother Sumrall? The foundations of our lives are moral and spiritual. If you don't have a good spiritual foundation inside of you, then you're not, you're not a good person. You're not a good person. We need God in our hearts. And I want to tell every living human being this morning, you have one or two inside of you. You either have God in you or you have the devil in you. There is no neutral territory. You either have God in your heart or you've got the devil in your heart. There is no neutral territory. You either belong to God or you belong to the devil. There is no neutral territory. You're not saying, well, I don't belong to either one. Yes, you do. You already belong to one of them. And you've got to make a decision if you want to change hands and say, I want to be on the Lord's side. It's a decision you have to make. Can you say amen? I want to tell you this morning that the moral and spiritual fiber of this nation is being tested. There are many people today that a few years ago would not have lived like they live today. Their parents a few years ago that would not have permitted their girls to wear miniskirts. Are you here or not? You will give an account to God for the exposing of your body. Our bodies are the temples of God, the Bible says. And whatever you think about it don't happen to mean that much. It's what God says about it. We're going to give an account to God. You're not going to give an account to your next door neighbor that tells you how you ought to look. You're going to give an account to God. And God is looking for a holy people who are zealous of good works. How many believe that? God is looking for a pure people. I want to tell you this morning that throughout our nation and the world, our moral and spiritual fibers are under attack. The devil is seeking to destroy the moral nature and the spiritual nature of the total human race and to make us to be like animals and to make us to be far away from God. We must decide, are we on God's side or not? The thing that made the John Wesley revival so great in England and changed that nation and saved it from a revolution, they said the Methodists have a conscience. And they called it the Methodist conscience. Methodists didn't do what the other people did because they were Methodists. They had a conscience. I want you to know that we have lost the Christian conscience in the last 10 or 15 years. That Christians say, well, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel this is wrong. It's not what you feel. It's what God says. Your conscience is seared with a hot iron. You don't have any feeling anymore. I used to do a lot of jail preaching. And it was real interesting. I never saw a man in jail but what he felt mistreated. And everybody had done him wrong. No matter how many he'd killed, how many he'd robbed, or whatever he'd done, it was a bad world that had treated him so bad. You can get the whole wrong idea about life. And you say, if you, if you want to have the right idea, the only place in the world to get it is the Bible. You won't ever get it in the newspaper or magazines. If we ever know what the foundations of our faith are, we'll know it from God's Word. In 2 Timothy 2.19 it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. This is 2 Timothy 2.19. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 
To my mind, that scripture substantiates all the preaching of this morning. 2 Timothy 2.19 Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Brother, the world may pass away. God stands sure. America may pass away. God stands sure. This present world will pass away, but God stands sure. He has this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Aren't you glad of that? Sometimes it's hard for us to know. But God knows those that are his. God knows those that belong to him. And he says, everyone that nameth the name of Christ, let him depart from iniquity. Brother, that's making a good foundation. A good foundation. I guess I was very fortunate, first, in being born in the south, the southern part of our nation. We studied Bible in the home. We had memory, memory contest in our home to see who could win a little lollipop. And we worked so hard for it, you'd think it was a million dollars. It was all in memorizing the Word of God. We had the same in our Sunday school. We memorized, we memorized the Holy Word of God. And we had contests to see who could know every book in the Bible, who would know all the strange facts about the Bible. When we went to the public school, we still studied God's Word. We had whole chapters to memorize in our school. We never knew of such a thing as a, as a public school teacher not also being a church worker. She could never have even taught in our public schools had she not also been a school teacher. And so we grew up. We grew up in a, in a, in a country that, that knew God and loved God. And in those houses, in those days, you didn't own a key for your front, front door. If you'd have asked us for a key to our front door, we wouldn't have never known where the thing was. We didn't even have one. You say, why? Well, who would drop in and steal anyway? You just didn't have things like that. We had a different kind of a world than we have. And it's changed in my lifetime. This thing has changed. I am saying this morning, our foundations are being tried and tested. It's no longer a national matter. I can't talk to the whole of America. It's a personal matter now. How about your foundations? Are you letting the devil eat them out like a rat eating cheese? Are you letting them be destroyed? Let us secure our foundations in God. Let us secure our foundations in God. Everything that was bad yesterday is still bad. Everything that was bad 50 years ago is still bad. Grandma was not an old fogey. She's in heaven rejoicing today. Get this thing right. Don't believe the lie of the devil. And let those that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. Depart don't mean sneak out on it. It means walk right out the front door. Throw your shoulders back and says, I'm leaving sin. I'm leaving iniquity. I'm leaving badness. I'm not telling you it's an easy thing to do. I'm only telling you it's the right thing to do. And I'm asking you to save your foundations in your own life, in your own home, in our own town, in our own city, in our own nation, and in our own world. I want to say that I have spent my total life saying what I have said this morning. I have tried to preserve civilization since I was a boy. I have tried to preserve homes. I shall never forget when I was 18 years old and conducting a meeting a thousand miles away from my home that a man and his wife, they must have both been 43 or 4, called me to one side and says, a preacher, uh, uh, tell us what to do. We're going to get a divorce. And, and here I was 18 years old and never had a serious girlfriend yet. And here were people over 40 years old looking at me saying, now you tell us what to do. And I looked back upon that wonderful moment. And I said, let me pray first. I laid my hands upon their heads. Tears ran down my cheeks. I said, Lord, I don't know anything about this problem, do I? But I said, Lord, you do. And I prayed so long and so loud until when I looked up, I said, God already answered you, didn't he? They hugged each other and kissed and went on back home and said, yes, the Lord already did it. And how glad I am that after all these years, I did it right. I took them to Jesus. And that's where I want to take you. Let us pray. We know the devil wishes to destroy the foundations of the total world because he hates God. He was thrown out of heaven and he hates God. And we poor humans are in the middle of the conflict between God and the devil. And he's seeking to destroy us 
not because he hates us, but only because he hates God. And we must secure our foundations in God. We must hold to our spirituality. Any time we get a blessing, we must hold it tenaciously and not go running around and lose it. And so this morning, Lord, anchor us to the solid rock, Christ Jesus. While every head is bowed, how many friends would say, Brother Sumrall, if I had to die this moment and meet Jesus, I am not ready. Pray for me. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand right now? If you had to meet God today, you're not ready. Would you let me pray for you? Would you raise your hand now? And let me pray for you right now. You know your life and your heart and your relationship. Is there one that will say, Brother Summerall, pray for me? Would you raise your hand quickly? Right quickly. Would you do it? This morning, man or woman or young person. You never know when it's the last time the preacher will make his appeal. And the last time the congregation will sing for you. Is the one that will say, remember me. Would you raise your hand now? We're ready to pray. For you. Is there one? In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you richly. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, my heart is touched. There will be some that will leave this building live the same way they lived before. They say our preacher is the same. He's fierce. He's strong. He's outspoken. And they won't know that what's happened. We've unloaded one of the deepest burdens of our heart. That this message has been on my heart for many days. I've slept with it. I've carried it around with me in my hand. I've carried it around with me in my heart. The foundations are being destroyed. And when the foundations are gone, the whole superstructure topples over. And so, dear Jesus, don't let anybody feel that this is just another sermon. But we, as the voice of God, speak to them today to depart from iniquity. It does matter which church you go to. It does matter. It does matter. You would not hear this kind of sermon in any other church in this city. And I know it. It does matter. It does matter. It's only the devil that says you can go anywhere. That is a lie. You must go where truth is preached in fierceness, with all strength and compassion and love. That's one of the destructions of the foundation of the church. We want watered-down messages, watered-down programs, in order to soothe our conscience. God wants our conscience to be alert and to get ready to meet Jesus when he comes. Bless this dear lady that raised her hand and may the deep peace and the great forgiveness of Jesus help her to devote her full time to winning the lost to my Savior before he comes. That this is more important than anything else things of this world shall pass away. Oh God, help us, we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Let us stand, please.